Can you guess what we're doing today in the secret kitchen? Hint, 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 has to do with bread. You asked about bread and I'm delivering today. I'm going to show you how to do my artisanal no-knead bread. It's absolutely delicious. It's so easy, you won't believe it. Flour, water, salt, yeast. Four ingredients, they come together and this is what you're going to end up with. And I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Welcome to Secret Kitchens of New Jersey, and by your request, we are starting on a, a journey of bread baking. So I have been posting pictures on Instagram and Facebook, and a lot of people reached out to me and wanted to know more about bread. So I have been baking bread for, oh God, a good five years or so. I've made a lot of mistakes, and I've learned a lot. And a lot of you said, well, you had this fear of using yeast because you weren't familiar with it. I get it. So we're going to talk a little bit about yeast, and today we're going to make this style bread, really an artisanal bread. Uh, it's absolutely delicious. It's so easy, and I purposely picked out my simplest bread recipe. I mean, I mean, honestly, I keep it on an index card. It's that simple. Bread starts with the most humble ingredients you can imagine. I have three and a half cups of flour, which I'm using all purpose. Of course, you can use bread flour. We're going to be using some salt. You know, I always use kosher salt, diamond crystal, and yeast. Now, let's just talk about yeast for a moment because there's lots of different types of yeast. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but this is the brand I use. Let the camera have a good look at that. I use instant yeast. I've been using this for a long time. I have great success with it. Yeast is, it's a living, it's a living, breathing thing. And the thing is, there you do have to treat it a little bit carefully. I keep, my, I open this package up, it's 16 ounces, one pound. I put it in a kind of a Tupperware thing, and it lives in my freezer. Why do I do that? Because, because if you leave it at room temperature, uh, your, yeast, your, your yeast might, um, is exposed to different temperatures, it can... Uh, go stale on you and then when you go to use it, it's not going to activate. By keeping it in the freezer, or at the very least the refrigerator, you're prolonging the life of your yeast. So you do whatever you want to do, but I'm saying that that would be, I would highly suggest you refrigerate or keep your yeast in the freezer. Alright, then the last ingredient is warm water. And by warm, I mean, you know, warm, not scalding hot. You can put your finger in it. Uh, if your water is too cold, your yeast won't activate. If the water is too hot, you're basically going to kill the yeast. So I'm looking for this kind of yeast, for rapid rise yeast. I'm looking for a water temperature about 120. So rather than eyeballing it, right now, uh, this is at, uh, this is still a little bit too warm. So I'm going to leave my temperature in. I'm going to add my other ingredients. All right, so this was it. I keep the, this is where I keep my yeast. I'm, actually, I'm almost out of it. So this yeast, little tiny granules, uh, the instant rise, it's, um, I mean, the rapid rise. Keep it in the freezer. You don't have to thaw it out or anything like that. I'm going to measure out two teaspoons of yeast. And my little trick is I... I put it on this side so I can see it, so I make sure that I remember that I actually added the yeast. Now I'm going to add two teaspoons of salt. I mean, this is so simple. And I always put the salt on the other side, because salt and yeast are not always friends. All right. Then I'm just going to whisk all this together. Again, the most humble ingredients you can imagine and it creates the most wonderful things. So I want to do this really in real time for you without editing so that you can see how easy it is and how, how fast it goes. All right, let me check my water temperature. All right, it still has a little bit of cooling to do. So while it's cooling, I want to tell you about my Dutch oven. This is a no-knead bread, 
It's going to, we're, we're going to mix in the water. It's going, to, it's going to proof or rise for about two hours. And then we're going to bake it. Now, we're going to bake it in a Dutch oven. This is by Lodge. I've had these, this for years and years. Uh, you probably noticed I have another one sitting on my stove. Many of you have Dutch ovens at home. This is a heavy cast iron one. I bought it specifically for my bread baking. Thing is, when you put the bread in there, you'll see how I do that later, and you put the lid on, it kind of creates a lot of steam, like a really super oven, and the bread bakes just beautifully, absolutely beautifully. All right, so sorry about that, but you know, this is the reality of when you're cooking and, or baking at home. I needed to have, this is the final ingredient, which is water, warm water. And by warm, I mean about 120-ish degrees, 122. My water was actually, it was too warm, and I needed to uh, let it cool down. Because if you put in water that's too hot, you will kill the yeast. So, this is about 122. I find an instant read thermometer very, very handy in the kitchen for many different things. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and pour this water in. And I want you to see, I'll let the camera have a look at this. This is already bubbling, which tells me it's bubbling and foaming, which is telling me my yeast, of course, is activated. So let's get this mixed up. And again, I'm going to do this in real time because I want you to see how easy this really is. So, so far, all we've done is just add uh, some very minor ingredients together in this bowl. And in real time, without, you know, fiddling around, where's my yeast and the water has to cool. I mean, we're talking just minutes to make this, to make this happen. All right, I'm going to switch to a spatula because it's going to be a little bit easier for me. So... When the yeast is activated with the warm water, I know you can't smell it, but it's got this wonderful yeasty smell to it. it smells great. So we're just kind of getting this uh, all mixed together. You really couldn't need this now if you wanted to. It's not, it's what they would call a, you know, a shaggy kind of a dough. And this is gonna go in my oven, which is not turned on for about two hours, okay? I'm just mixing everything through. All right, that, that's kind of it. I mean, seriously, that's what I'm left with, all right? You can do this, this is not a big deal. Because here's the thing, once we do this, this is what we're gonna wind up with. This is so, I mean, mm, it smells wonderful. It's got these beautiful holes in it where the, you know, the carbon dioxide, the gas that's released from the yeast makes all these wonderful holes. It's got a beautiful crust. It's going to be fabulous. So let me go ahead and um, get this. Now, you want to cover it. Now, my bowl happens to have a cover, and I'm going to, I'm going to use it. Otherwise, I would cover it with a saran wrap, that kind of a thing. You don't want to put this in a windy, drafty area. It's February here in New Jersey, where we are, and I'm putting it in my oven intentionally because I know that's a warm, draft-free area. So this is going in my oven for two hours to proof or to rise, and we'll come back in two hours and we'll check on it, okay? All right, to make life a little bit easier, I had a swap all ready for us. So this, was, uh, this has been proofing for, I'm going to say about two hours and ten minutes. Let me uncover it. And um, you can see this is kind of, well, it's very jiggly. It's got lots of bubbly, uh, you know, holes in it from the, uh, from the carbon dioxide, from the yeast. And if I do this, you can kind of see all those nice gluten strands. I mean, this is, this is exactly the way it's supposed to be. So here's what we're going to do. I have a piece of parchment paper and I've got this bowl. You can use any kind of bowl you want. You're going to see what I'm going to do in a moment. I'm using my dough scraper. I'm going to get this dough out here onto the parchment paper. And it's going to all make sense in a moment. If you don't have a dough scraper, and I'm also going to take this moment with the dough scraper to kind of, if you want to call this kneading, barely. Okay. All right, so now I'm just going to get this on the parchment paper. This dough is obviously very hard to work with, not something that you'd really be able to knead at all. 
So you can see, I hope, how easy this has, this has really been. All right, let me get all this dough out. Okay, just going to scrape that out here. All right, so I know it doesn't look like anything, but you got to trust the process. So this dough, while, while my, um, I don't think I even told you, I took my, ca oh, I took my cast iron Dutch oven, I put it in the oven, and my oven is preheating to 450. Uh, the cast iron Dutch oven is covered. You must preheat it, everything all in advance. So that's in the oven, and that's gonna, pre that's gonna take roughly 30, 35 minutes. So while it's preheating, couple of purposes. First of all, it helps me do a little bit of rough shaping on the dough. And it's a place for, um, it's a place, you know, it's a place to just hold it. So this is going to uh, proof rise for roughly 35 minutes. And I'm going to cover it with a, um, I'm covering it with a clean towel. And I'm just going to uh, leave it off to the side. We'll come back in about 35 minutes. This will be ready, and I'll show you how I get it into the Dutch oven, okay? Let's, let's catch up together. My bread has been proofing for about 35 minutes. Whoops, I don't want to keep it in here. You can see what it looks like. It's, it's really puffed up, gotten nice and bubbly. And you can see again why I kept it in this bowl with the parchment paper. This would be very hard to move around. Now, while this has been happening in that same 35 minutes, my Dutch oven has been uh, preheating in my oven for, oh, well, let's see, what is it, 450 or 425? It'll, all, all the directions obviously will be below. So let me get the Dutch oven, which is screaming hot, screaming, and we're gonna get this in the Dutch oven. I mean, this is, this is the serious time you've gotta be really careful, okay? Okay, this thing is screaming hot, and uh, I mean screaming. So we want to be super careful about getting this in. And again, when you're doing this at home, you won't have lights, camera, action, all that kind of thing. All right, look what I'm doing. I'm lifting this out carefully, putting it right in, right in. Okay, and then I'm going to get the top. This is going in the oven for 30 minutes, and then we're gonna take the lid off, and I'll show you what it looks like, because then we're gonna put it back in the oven uncovered for about 12 minutes. So let me get this in the oven, we'll be right back. The bread's been in the oven for about 30 minutes. It's screaming hot. I'm just taking the lid off because I want you to see what it looks like. It, while it's done, it's, it's really very pale. It's not very attractive yet. We need to put this back in the oven. Nice though. We need to put this back in the oven for, I'm going to say, about 10 minutes. This is kind of to your liking. How, um, how dark, etc. you want the top to be. I like it kind of on the medium side. So I'm going to put this in for tw uh, 10 minutes and then we'll check it when, after 10 minutes, and I'll show you what it looks like, all right? Back in the oven. Uncovered. Oh, that's hot. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes, and uh, you can see that it got much darker. Now, if you want it even darker, you can leave it in longer. For me, this is about where I want to be. Now what I want to do is get this out very carefully. And we've got, now, as tempting as it might be, to dive into, you know, steaming hot bread out of the oven. You gotta let it cool for a while before you can touch it. Now this is hot, but it's beautiful. Look at that. Mmm, smells wonderful. All right, so that has to cool down. I'm gonna say you got, I'd, I'd give that at least a good solid 15 minutes, if not longer, before you can even touch it. All right. This is the bread that just came out of the oven. It's still really very hot, but listen. Nice, right? Nice crunch. And 
when you press on it, oh, it's going to be awesome. And one way you know that the bread is done, when you turn it over, you get this nice hollow sound. Yeah, perfect, perfect. But I need to let this cool a little bit longer, but I just wanted to slice into one of these guys because, you know, these are also, this is the same thing. And I'll tell you, it's, it's delicious. Mmm. Use it for sandwiches, use it for toast, make garlic bread, do it for grilled cheese, anything you would do. But I will tell you, you won't find anything like this in the supermarket. No preservatives, wonderful ingredients. And I think you're going to agree with me that it really was pretty easy to do this. A little time consuming, but so worth it. And if there's a bread shortage that comes around, you won't have to worry because you'll make your own bread. It's totally worth it. So thanks for joining me today in the Secret Kitchen, and we'll see you next time. Hey, be sure you like and subscribe, and make some bread.